Chrome OS fans were worried when Google discontinued the Chromebook Pixel earlier this year. Would there be a follow-up? Well, good news. There is a follow-up. It's right here, and it's called the Google Pixel Book. Now, like its predecessor, this is a premium device. It's priced at $1,000 to start, so it is competing with other high-end laptops instead of going for the budget angle, which is what most Chromebooks do. Naturally, at that price, you have to wonder, is it worthwhile to get a Chrome OS device? Let's take a closer look. Now, the first thing you're going to notice about the Pixelbook is that it is incredibly thin. It is 0.4 inches. And that's thin for any laptop, but it doesn't quite tell the whole story because, as it turns out, a lot of that thickness is actually in the display lid. If you look at an edge on here, you can see it's fairly thick relative to the overall chassis. That means when you open it, it feels even thinner than the specifications say, and it's actually quite remarkable. Now, otherwise, the overall look of the device is going for synergy with the Pixel smartphones. That's definitely a big brand for Google now. And as you can see, if you look around this two-in-one, uh, it has a very similar look with the two-tone and the use of glass on the lid. It's pretty handsome and it's a little unique. Uh, it looks a little bit different from any other laptops on the market, so that's good to see. Now, one minor downside to this design is that glass is slippery. And if you happen to be toting it around this way, you're gonna notice you have a little bit of a hard time keeping a hold of it. Now, it's not that big of a deal because you can always just carry it the other way, or you might just be carrying it around when it's open. And the interior has a nice rubberized grippy coating, but the glass can be a little annoying from time to time. Also, connectivity, well, you get two USB Type-C ports along with a headphone jack. And you know, that doesn't seem like a lot, but hey, for a thin laptop these days, that's pretty much what you're gonna get. Should note that is one more USB Type-C port than you'll get with a MacBook. Now, as a two-in-one device, this can be used as either a laptop or a tablet. When you're using it as a laptop, you'll find the keyboard's actually quite decent. Even though this is thin, there's pretty good key travel here. Uh, so it feels nice to type on for long periods of time. Touchpad is pretty good as well. It's got a nice glass surface, very slick, very responsive. So really no complaints from that angle. Now, when you fold it over to use it as a tablet, uh, it feels pretty decent. Uh, now at 12.3 inches, the screen is definitely large for a tablet. So it's gonna feel a little bit unwieldy. Also, you might notice that the edges are kind of sharp. It feels like maybe it could be designed a little better to fit in your hand. Uh, however, compared to a lot of two-in-ones that have this design, it is lighter than many of them, and you can use it for short periods of time without much discomfort, or if you want, you can also just sort of prop it up like this uh, to hold itself aloft. Now, one other thing worth mentioning is that in both laptop and tablet use, you'll notice the display is great. It's a three by two form factor display, so it's a little bit uh, more square than most displays. Gives you a little more useful space in that 12.3 inches. It's also very bright, it has a good pixel density, and it has great colors. So in general, if you're watching videos, looking at photos, they're all gonna really pop. Now one of the major new features of the Pixelbook is the active stylus. Pin support is definitely central to this. It's not something that was available on the previous Google-made Chromebook. The stylus is $100, so it is an add-on. You don't get it uh, by default. Uh, and while it looks, it looks very nice uh, from afar, it's a bit chunky. Uh, it really feels more like a marker than a pin. So it can be kind of uncomfortable to use if you're trying to do a lot of handwriting. It seems more su suited for highlighting. Another minor quibble with the pin is that there's no place to put it. It doesn't insert into the laptop. It doesn't attach the side of it anywhere. It's also very round. It's perfectly round. So if you put it onto a surface and it's, it's a little bit tilted in any way, it's probably gonna roll off. So it can be a bit tricky to keep track of it. However, when you actually do use the pin, it feels pretty nice. Uh, you can use Google Keep and a variety of other apps to do some writing. And you can just see that the, the latency on it is great. It actually puts down ink the moment you touch the pen to the touch screen. It's every bit as good in that regard as Microsoft Surface Pro line and better than a lot of other competitors. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of handwritten notes, this is a pretty good option. 
Now aside from the pin, the other major new feature is Google Assistant, which is available for the first time in a Chromebook. It can be summoned through voice command or by pressing a button on the pin. And if you do that, you can actually search for things by highlighting them, which is kind of handy if you're curious about what the definition of a word or something of that nature. Uh, Google Assistant is quite snappy and is pretty good at detecting your voice in a variety of environments. And it can do a lot of the basic stuff you'd expect, like find local movie times or take some notes for you. It does have some trouble in some other areas. For instance, it never seemed to pick up on things that are in our Google Drive. So you might expect, if you ask it to search your Google Documents for uh, whatever, a specific thing, a grocery list, uh, maybe something you're working on yesterday, it would bring that up. But it doesn't. Actually, all it did was it brought up a link to Google Docs, which wasn't the most useful thing. Uh, the other thing about the assistant is that it can be a little buggy. Uh, we definitely had some issues with it uh, not detecting our voice from time to time in the sense that it wasn't so much not detecting the voice, it just wasn't working then and we had to go back and reset it. So that was a little troublesome. Overall, it definitely, you know, it's a nice feature to have, but right now there's some rough edges there that need to be ironed out. Now the Pixelbook also has support for Android apps. This is not a feature that's new and exclusive to the Pixelbook. We saw it previously on Samsung's Chromebook Pro and Plus, and other Chromebooks have the feature now too. But Google says with this particular Chromebook, it should be a little more stable than with some competitors, that it's more specifically designed for it. We definitely had no trouble getting Android apps installed on the device, and a lot of them worked quite well. Uh, we did see little bugs here and there though. The main thing is you'll notice sometimes when you try to use a text field with the touch screen, maybe it doesn't work properly. We also had a couple that crashed, for instance, the Yelp app always crashed when we were browsing through the gallery. Uh, otherwise, apps like this Netflix app um, and games like Asphalt 7, those worked with no problem. So Android app support does add some value to the device and it does provide software that you otherwise couldn't use with Chrome OS. Just don't expect it to work perfectly 100% of the time. Now, the Pixelbook is available with Intel Core M processors of Core i5 or i7 variety. The M series is more efficient than other core processors. It's targeted at really thin laptops. That means it sips less power, but it's not quite as powerful. However, on the Chrome OS device, we didn't really notice any issue as far as the speed at all. And we did have the i5 model, not the more powerful and more expensive i7. So I don't think that most users are gonna have any problem with the speed of the device. It also has 128 gigabyte solid state drive standard, and that's upgradable to 512 gigabytes if you'd like. And you get eight gigabytes of standard RAM up to 16 gigabytes upgradable. Overall, and it's top tier form. It's a very powerful Chromebook, probably overkill for what most people need. Now, the battery is 41 watt hours, which is actually kind of small. If you pay any attention to that on tech specs, you might see like, for instance, the Dell XPS 13, that's got a 60 watt hour battery. The Lenovo Yoga 920 has a 70 watt hour battery, almost twice the size. However, we didn't have any problem with battery life on this device. We couldn't run all the same tests because Chrome OS doesn't run the same software as Windows. However, we could run browser-based tests and we found that it was right in league with those mentioned devices. You can expect it to last a full workday with ease. So is the Pixelbook worth a thousand dollars? Well, from a hardware perspective, it's actually not bad. It has a good processor, it has a great display, has a very long battery life. All that looks really good. The downside is that it has a few rough edges with app support for Android, with the Assistant, and with the pen. And these detract from it and make it a little bit harder to use than it really should be. If you're interested in Chrome OS primarily because of the value, you probably wanna look at something like the Samsung Chromebook Pro, which is $550 and has many of the same features. However, if you are a Chrome OS purist, there's no denying this is the Chromebook for you.